Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to be checking out some Linux-based alternatives to Premiere Pro. So let's jump right into it. And hey, if you're not familiar with us, we're all about helping you, the video creator, with templates, footage, tutorials, plugins, audio, and more. In fact, we have tons of free Premiere Pro templates ready to download. I've put a link in the description down below, so make sure to hop over and grab some free stuff. If you're a Linux user, you're probably used to that feeling of being in a world that's not exactly set up for you. Linux is unfortunately much less frequently supported by mainstream programs like Premiere Pro, for example. But that doesn't mean there aren't options available to you. You can really create some amazing video products with some industry standard tools. And we've got an entire list of 13 different options for you in an article. Feel free to check that out. But in this video, we're gonna be breaking down my top five personal picks for you. But just a quick disclaimer, we wanna make sure that if you have an affinity for a certain piece of video editing software, whether or not we give it a good or nitpicky review, we wanna make sure that you know that we don't see that as a reflection of your capabilities as a video editor. A tool is just a tool in the hands of the person who actually holds the skill. We know a lot of editors who could do amazing things with iMovie. We just wanted to give you our brutally honest opinion of the pros and cons to each of these software, knowing that a lot of people who are gonna be viewing this video probably are looking for the next piece of software that they're gonna be jumping to. So with that out of the way, let's start it off with number one, DaVinci Resolve. Full disclosure here, I love DaVinci Resolve. I've actually used it for a lot of my own personal projects and whether that's for the actual assembly and creation of the project or just finishing up and tweaking the coloring at the end, it's really served me well in my career. Now, we've actually gone over this program in detail in context of another video, our Premiere Pro alternatives for Mac and PC. So instead of restating everything that I said in that video, I'm just gonna let my past self tell you more about it. If you've been in the video editing world for a number of years, you probably know DaVinci Resolve in terms of coloring. It was sort of the industry standard for a long time for taking your final video product and then tweaking the colors and overall aesthetic to get your look to achieve that next level. I say was because DaVinci Resolve has sort of developed itself into being on par with really any other high quality NLE or nonlinear editor. You can really do anything you can imagine with this piece of software. From really basic placement and timing and adding things like text, all the way up to more complex visual effects. Fantastic color correction and grading and more. And here's the thing, it's free. Well, at least the free version is free. But just because it's their free version doesn't mean that it's actually handicapping you. In fact, a lot of video editors might actually go throughout their day-to-day -day routine and not actually reach the limitations that Resolve has set in place for their free version. But just to be clear, there are some things that you will actually need the paid studio version in order to be able to access. The first limitation is anything above Ultra HD resolution, which is basically 3,840 pixels horizontal by 2,160 pixels vertical. So what this basically means is that you can work with 4K footage in Resolve for free. Just be sure to know your specifications. For example, I co-directed a short film recently where we shot in a little bit of a different resolution, 4,608 by 1920 which basically meant that we couldn't actually run our footage through Resolve without upgrading to the studio version. So all that to say, just be sure to know your limitations before expecting to do your entire film inside of the free version. The free version also doesn't allow for collaboration tools to be available for multiple editors or colorists to work at the same time, no noise reduction, no face refinement, lens correction, and a really specific one here, no support for 10-bit footage coming from the GH5. Any way you slice it, this is an absolutely insane piece of software that you're able to get for free. And if you need some of those extra fancy features, it's a really tempting deal to be able to get it all for only $299. The only real downside that you might experience with Resolve, apart from just the learning curve, is the idea that Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro X have other tangential programs that work alongside with it. For example, Premiere Pro has After Effects and Audition, while Final Cut Pro X has Logic and Motion. DaVinci Resolve just doesn't have this ecosystem of other products that work flawlessly with it, at least not in that same way. To some people, this is an absolute deal breaker, and to others, they won't really miss it at all. The bottom line is that if you can't pay for video editing software, that shouldn't stop you from editing. There's absolutely no excuse now. Number two, Lightworks. Lightworks is an interesting piece of software. It might just be the circle that I find myself in, but it really seems to be the most notable piece of video editing software that the general public just really doesn't know about. It's got a huge number of feature films under its belt, like The King's Speech, Wolf on Wall Street, Bruce Almighty, and Pulp Fiction? Really? Wow, I guess it's been around for quite a while. And it just goes to show you that the video editing software that you use matters 
But you don't need to use programs like Avid or Premiere just because they're popular. And you might imagine that with those sorts of movies under its belt, Lightworks is an incredibly powerful piece of software. You've got the capability to do everything from ordering clips on the timeline, and adding text, to manipulating audio, and even doing some more fine detail VFX work. By all means, this software holds its own with no trouble. And here's the other thing, it's free, kind of. I mean, the free version comes with everything that the pro version does, except for those Boris VFX editions. And the only handicapping restriction that it puts on you is that you can only export in 720p. Ooh. So you could technically get away with just using the free version, but really, if you're doing anything more than just learning and practicing, you're gonna wanna drop some cash to actually get the paid version, which is super frustrating and annoying, but let's go over the price options that you have available to you. There's a monthly subscription pack for $24.99, a yearly subscription model for $174.99, and simply purchasing it outright for $437.99 USD. In the end, Lightworks is amazing. It's a really incredible piece of software, but I would have a really tough time switching to it for myself personally because of the issues of price and because there's not really a high population user base for it. I said before that the popularity of a software doesn't make it a good or a bad one, but what it does mean is that there's less other people using it, meaning that there's less tutorials online and less communities that can help you work through problems as you encounter them. Not a deal breaker for some, but something that you should definitely keep in mind. Next up, we have number three, Blender. So Blender is a unique pick. We included it on this list because it's absolutely free and because it's got an amazing set of unique features that no other software on this list will probably have. What Blender actually is, is an open source 3D creation suite, which means that at its base, it's really got a handle on anything 3D, modeling, rigging, animation, simulation, compositing, motion tracking, and even some game creation capabilities. But even though the focus seems to be in those other areas, it's nothing to sneeze at in terms of being a standard video editor. But it's got some problems. The interface is really challenging to get a hold of at first, and it's gonna have a steeper than average learning curve. If you're coming from other traditional NLEs, you might get frustrated a lot. And as soon as you open it up, you might be surprised by what you see. Oh, wait, but wait, what? Wait, how, how do I edit videos from here? What do I do? Well, the problem is when it drops you in, you actually need to manually go up and select your video editing options from the top. Further emphasizing that the priority of Blender isn't really as a video editor. And your frustration probably won't go away from there. You'll notice some little design choices along the way that aren't technically wrong, but they really show that Blender isn't as concerned about playing by the traditional video editing rules. Like audio typically being placed above its corresponding video clip, not below, above. Again, not the end of the world here, but you can kind of start to see what I mean. Keep in mind that Blender is amazing considering that it's free, completely free. Like not like it's free, but you can upgrade to the higher version later on. No, like the best possible version you can get of Blender is free. And that's because the Blender organization is actually a nonprofit, which means that they're a little bit more concerned with getting powerful tools into the hands of video creators than making money, which I can't really complain about. Keep in mind that Blender isn't the personal option that I would select for myself, but there is a strategic reason why we included it in this list. If you're a Linux user, we realize there's a chance that you're not like the typical Windows and Mac user base. You had the option to choose either Mac or PC, and instead you chose the Penguin. And we realize that there might be a little bit of a tinkering spirit inside a lot of Linux users. Trying new things and troubleshooting on your own might not be annoyances to you so much as cool challenges to overcome. And maybe there's a little bit of pride in taking the road less traveled. If that's you, then Blender's options for 3D creation might actually be of interest to you just to try out for fun. And who knows, if down the line you need some powerful 3D animation software, you got Blender at the ready for free. It's powerful, it's capable, and it's gonna keep your wallet happy as well. Next up is Shotcut. Oh boy! Okay, so Shotcut is video editing software, and I don't like it very much. It's made a lot of progress along the way, but it's still not something that I would consider nearly in the same ballpark as Resolve or Lightworks. When you open up Shotcut, its presentation leaves a lot to be desired. In its default layout, right after opening, it genuinely looks like there's some interface errors. Numbers are being cut off, can't distinguish different sections, which there obviously must be if certain panels are being cut off. When you drop a clip into your playlist window, where you add and store clips to be used in your video project, 
they immediately start playing after being dropped in. Let me be clear, this is a bad idea. The number of times you're gonna be jumping out of your skin from audio catching you by surprise because it starts playing without you initiating it is gonna make you frustrated before you even place anything on the timeline. But in its favor, it's completely free, like Blender. But unlike Blender, its design is actually centered around video editing. If you're used to other traditional NLEs, your experience using Shotcut will be easier and have less of a steep learning curve. At the end of the day, it starts off on the wrong foot, but it's got everything you need in order to create your own high quality video projects. And besides those complaints that I've already mentioned, the interface is actually pretty easy to use, and it feels like I'm not running up into walls in order to make my video project my own. So at the end of this section, even though we've been really hard on Shotcut, it still checks enough boxes for me to put it at number four on this list. Number five, Caden Live. Every piece of software that we've talked about so far, and actually in every video that we've done like this, I've made sure to download the program myself and use it to the point where I actually feel like I can understand the program. And so that the pros and cons are actually coming from user experience and not secondhand information from somebody else. But because Caden Live only has this weird beta version for Windows, the experience that I had might not be representative of what you experience in Linux. And keep in mind that my experience would be worse if anything. To give you an example of why I'm giving you this disclaimer, there seems to be a problem with even just bringing footage into the program at all. Very basic forms of video content like MOV and MP4 files were not able to be imported at first when trying to accumulate footage. But by manually going up to the settings to bypass codec verification, the clips all worked properly. Like there's no problems now. So why isn't it set that way by default? That seems to be something you want to get correct right off the bat. But after that little hiccup, I actually really liked the software. I was really surprised by how intuitive the interface was to actually use, and it has all the basic features that allow for controlling your image and audio. I wasn't thrilled by their color workflow, but you can at least make the basic changes you need to feel like you have control over your image. I was actually surprised by how much I enjoyed editing with Caden Live, but at the end of the day, I still found it to be way less consistent and reliable than Shotcut, which is why it rounds out the end of our list. And yes, that means that the order that we went through for these programs is the order of my personal recommendation. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it can maybe give you a little bit of insight to which program you can use for your own video editing workflow in Linux. If you guys like this video, we have tons of others that you can check out here at motionarray.com. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.